I, I, I got to, I sat down quietly and uh, taking a note of the situation that the whole world has got her eyes and her tongue on the money. So I should be very careful how I use that money. So what did I do? Land has become very, very expensive now where we are. And I hear other places. Right now, a plot of land is costing 3,000 cities. Hey, 30,000 cities. So what did I do? I bought two plots of land and I paid for one cut straight away. I'm yet to pay for the other one. Now, the other one, uh, my son says he would drive. I said, okay, for the past two years, I mean, he's been to um, a driving school and you know, no company would want to uh, employ a green one driver. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They all, they all wanted uh, experienced drivers. So for two years, he's been at home. And uh, he was becoming frustrated. So I How old is he? He's 31 now. Okay. So I said, then I don't know. I told him, you wait. I believe something will happen. I'll buy a car for you. Meanwhile, I didn't know where the money was coming from. Mm. So, when it happened, when the vice president gave me the money, I said, Hallelujah. After putting the 30,000 cities in that plot of land, the remaining 20,000. I said, no, this is the time for me to do something for my son so that he won't uh, 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 go on sitting at home, you understand me? So I bought uh, a home, a Ghana used taxi in very good condition for him. So that at least with that, he could also uh, start doing something for himself and then um, he would gain the necessary experience. You understand me? Yeah. So right now, uh, he's uh, registered with uh, uh, a station here where we are. And he flies that road. Actually, it's not that far. But I told him I wouldn't want him to go to far places, I mean complicated places. He should take his time and then uh, get experience before. So I did talk to Miss G. Uh, Miss G because um, she's been to my house uh, a few times. And um, I think the first time when I was very sick and then she came around. And even uh, did, um, after, after the visit, she did an appeal for uh, uh, help from the public. After that, uh, we've been in touch. Uh, anytime I was in some difficulty, I would call her, yes, she would help. So on this particular day, I just took, uh, sent her uh, a message. It was a WhatsApp message. Now, uh, WhatsApp assures us that uh, it is end-to-end -end encrypting, isn't it? Yes. So whatever you say, not even WhatsApp uh, would listen in. That's what we are told. Yeah. So I sent her the message all right. And then uh, I didn't hear from her. So I thought uh, maybe uh, she will be busy or something. But uh, just last night, uh, she called me and she said uh, when I sent the message, she was in there. She was in Nigeria. And so she sent a message to somebody to see if uh, the person could be of uh, assistance. Specifically, she said she sent it to her husband. So, I don't know. Uh, Miss G, I don't think would consciously do a thing like that, no. We spoke at length last night. She 
even promised coming to see me today. So as I'm talking, I'm, I'm expecting her. Maybe after talking to you an hour later, I'll call her to find out whether she is coming or not. Mm. And uh, I don't think Miss G would come because it's not the first time. She, 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 she has even made an appeal on my behalf. And she has personally helped me a number of occasions. So I don't think Miss G would do a thing like that. No, I don't think she would do it. In, in any case, I don't know how it happened. Thank so uh, what I would say is, please, don't attack Miss G. I don't think she would consciously do a thing like that. No, I don't, I don't believe that. Hi, a happy new year to all of you. My name is Miss G. I'm here because a conversation, a voice note for that matter, that has my name in there has gone viral. Now, if you follow my works, you know me, you know that when I do interviews um, and there's backlash, people call me out, people have reservations and they voice them out. I never come to defend myself. I never even come to respond to most of them. I just do not think is necessary because I feel like it's the hazard that comes with the job that we do. Maybe it's a reason it's taking me quite a while to respond to this voice notes saga. Let's go back to 2001 when I got products from some sponsors. I went all the way to Dodua and even beyond to look for Titi. I donated these items or those items to him. I sat with him for a conversation. It was during that interview that he told me that he had heart disease. He had a heart disease and needed help. I put the information out there. Subsequently, I came to you right here on social media to appeal for funds for him. Put his number out there, of course, with his permission. And because you do not know what conversations have gone on behind the scenes i never came to you to say this is tc's voice or this is tc's message to me this is why i'm doing this this is why i'm doing it. i have never done that and from then people responded subsequently others went to uh, uh grant him an interview it was after that that the vice president came to his aid and tt and i have kept a relationship since then till date tt sends me voice notes on a regular You've never heard any of them. Titi sends me messages on a regular. You've never seen any of them. I have never come to any of you via social media or personally to say, Titi sends me this, Titi sends me that. No, it's never happened before. Because I respect the relationship I have with him. I respect his privacy. I never do anything public without Titi's consent. Now, back to the conversation that has gone viral. On the 17th of December, I was all the way in Akwaibom in Nigeria when TC dropped the voice note that has gone viral to me. It was a voice note. And I sent him a message saying that uh, I wasn't in town and that when I get back to Ghana, I'll address his issues. I came back to Ghana, I began to ask questions because if you heard that voice note that has gone viral, you will hear that he talks about the vice president's money being invest, uh, invested, yes, and that the Greater Accra Regional Minister's pledge of 1500 a month came just once and the minister is not redeeming his pledge. He goes to the minister's office, they say the minister is not available and because of that, people have refused also to come to his aid. I was worried about it because I know his situation. And so I came to Ghana and I began to ask questions. And then I reached out to somebody who knows somebody in the office of the vice president to ask questions about what TT's claims are. And this person in the office of the vice president was vividly worried and said, Oh, we have redeemed our pledge to him and this is not going to be a good one for the vice president if he gets to hear it or if he goes out there. I remember the words, if it gets out there, it's not going to be a good one for the vice president, blah, 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 blah. How did you get, how did he say it? And we said there was a voice note. He says, can I hear the voice notes? So in confidence, not thinking that anything will be done, but thinking that I will get solution for TT because again, the vice president's office has been mentioned. The greater Accra regional minister has been mentioned. I do not have access to this big wigs in politics. So I thought that sending this voice note to this person in the office of the vice president, we would get some solutions and that's how the voice notes 
was sent to this person in the office of the vice president. Now, fast forward, I hear this voice after days on radio. How? I'm not the one who leaked it. I only sent it to an individual in the office of the vice president. He also says he's not sent it to anybody. So who leaked the audio? Maybe we should start asking questions. Ask those who first published it, how they got the audio. Those who have the audio, maybe you should come out and tell us how you got the audio. It is not nice and it's unfair to have people drag me, knowing very well that I never shared any audio with any media house. I never shared any audio with any journalist. I never shared any audio with any blog. For crying out loud, I have a YouTube channel. I have blogs I could have published this on. They are not, or it is not on any of these. How do I leak a video, uh, a voice note, a private conversation, which you've had over and over, I've had this over and over with Titi. How do I leak this one to the public? I never leaked the voice note. I will never do that. I went to Titi's aid. I've always been there for Titi. If you pick up a phone and call Titi, there's no way Titi will tell you I've been there for him. It's quite sad, appalling, disheartening, heartbreaking. I never leaked a video, a voice note. I will never do a thing like that. So please, let's ask the people who are publishing. Since this person in the office of the vice president says he didn't also leak that conversation, let's ask the people who are publishing if they'll be honorable enough to let us know where they got the voice note from. Maybe then we'll know who finally leaked the voice note. But I, Miss G, God is my witness. I didn't leak the voice notes and for all of you who are calling TT to embarrass him to insult him please stop please stop may God be our guide and may the truth finally come out and I hope the truth will suffice thank you